Welcome to the third video of the Torque Script video series. In this lesson, we are showing you how to use game scripts and packages. A game script is pretty much a text file that contains runnable Torque Script code. These scripting files have a .cs extension, and to execute them, you can use the exec command. I'm going to create a new project in Torque 2D. I'm going to name it Video 3. And now I'm going to open up my trusty scripting IDE, Notepad, and type in some code. I'm just going to say, file has been executed. Okay, I'm going to save this file in the game scripts folder of that project. So, video 3, game, game scripts. I'll save it as test.cs. Now, when you save files in the game scripts folder, they don't automatically get executed. So, I'm going to have to tell it to be executed using the exec command. I'm going to clear the text here using cls. Now, I'm going to type in exec left parenthesis quotes for denoting a string local reference meaning this project slash game slash game scripts slash test dot cs and it should execute the code so file has been executed meaning the file has run let's say if we put in a function to this code so function I'm just going to say test. So when function test gets run, you have some output. Test has run. Okay. Now when we run the code, we're going to have to re execute the script. And file has been executed, but the test function hasn't been run. This is because we need to call the test function in order for it to run. <coughs> now the cool thing about game scripts and scripting in general is that if you change the file, so I'm just going to change this to a bunch of random symbols, actually it won't run, but uh, actually yeah it will. Okay, change this to a bunch of symbols and we save the code, we don't have to recompile it to access the changes. Now when I rerun test, a bunch of symbols appear. It saves a lot of time when you're editing game scripts. You don't have to recompile your project. In this section, I'm going to teach you how to make packages. Packages allow you to activate and deactivate groups of code and are primarily used for function overriding. Function overriding is having multiple definitions of a function and you're able to switch between which definition you want to use at a given time. I'm going to open up Notepad and make an example. I'm just going to use testcs, delete the code, create a new package. I'm going to name this package uh, p1, and first you want to put a left curly brace to open the package, and an end curly brace to close it. After the package, you're going to need a semicolon. Inside the package, you can define any function you want. I'm going to say function f1 and this function will just display f1 in package 1. I'm going to clone this function and make two others f2 and f3. Okay, I'm going to save this over test.cs and re-execute that script. Okay. Now what we're gonna have to do is activate the package by typing in activate package typing in the package's name which is p1 Okay, P1 is now active, so we should be able to type in any of the functions F1, F2, and F3 to activate them. Try F1. Try F1 works, F2 works, and F3 works. Now, if we want to make these functions unavailable, we can deactivate the package. 
I deactivate package followed by the package name P1. Now when I type in F1, nothing should come up, which it's unable to find function F1, F2, and F3. Now let's do something interesting. I'm going to copy this package and call it P2. I'm going to change the definitions. F1 will now say function 1 in package 2 and F2 in package 2, F3 in package 2. I save this, re-execute the script. Now I'm going to activate first package 1. I need to activate package. Okay. So now I'm going to test F1, F2, F3, which they work because we have activated package 1. Now without deactivate deactivating package 1. I'm going to activate package 2 which has the same function names as the first package. So activate package P2. Okay, now when we type in F1 it only displays F1 in package 2 so it only runs this function. So the function definition F1 is overwritten. Now I'm going to confirm this for function 2 and function 3. Now what happens if we deactivate package 2? Is it going to erase the function definition entirely, or is it going to go back to the functions defined in package 1? Let's find out. Deactivate package p2. And Okay, so now when I try f1, it displays the original function definition from package 1. f2, f3. Okay. Now if I re-deactivate the first package, P1, nothing should be displayed when we uh, type in F1. Okay, so F1, it's unable to find all the functions. Thank you for watching this video. If you're looking for other great videos or the other parts of this tutorial, you can check out our website at makingindiegames.com. Thank you.